25 minutes past seven o'clock on this Wednesday morning and the government has announced a four million pound project to train artificial intelligent tools to assist teachers in creating lessons plans and marking homework. Mm, it will use government documents including curriculum guidance and anonymised pupil assessments to develop AI tools for classrooms. Yeah, anyway, let's just say they've got all this stuff in, in place anyway. Andrew Eborn uh, is with us now. We know Andrew, friend of the programme. Um, he's a, a broadcaster, lawyer and the thing is you're a future. Ah, yes, I knew yeah. you were going to say that, absolutely. Yeah. We basically look at all the opportunities and help predict the future as a result of it, but also learning lessons from history, the mistakes that people make. I, I always said that history repeats itself because we don't learn the lessons from history. So what I do, I work with companies around the world looking at the lessons that could be learned and telling them what new tools are available, but warning the great opportunities, but warning of some of the risks mm. as well. So what are the great opportunities? Because you, people get very sensitive when it comes to the classroom. Yes and uh, new, new things being imposed on children how do you see it going and how quickly do you see it going? It's already being used. So I always say that AI is our greatest human achievement, but potentially our biggest existential threat. So we have to understand it. What it does, it facilitates certain processes, boring processes, like programming uh, basically classes, working out what sort of materials need to be done. The great thing about this initiative is they're making resources available, centralized resources, so they can come up with programs and uh, class plans and so on and so forth. So it will free up teachers' time to do more more important things like interaction with pupils. So that's the great thing about it. They've also offered this one million pound reward, if you like, to help with basically with the processing of exam results. So they can do the marking as well and the, on that sort of thing. So, so it will standardize it. Things. Yeah. So now look, we've also also friend of the program, we say good morning to Chris McGovern. Um, and, and the thing about Chris is he's a former head teacher. Um, you've always had very, very interesting things to say, Chris, anytime I've ever spoken to you. Where do you stand on artificial intelligence? Well, first of all, let me say we're not short of uh, technology in schools. There's a technology overload, okay. and many young people are addicted to, to digital technology. It's a bit like educational cocaine. We're not Luddites. We know that um, AI can play a part. But there are many problems that are associated with this. Baroness Greenfield, who's one of the world's leading brain scientists, wrote a book a few years ago. Uh, it, was called, uh, it was called Mind Change. She said we, we obsess about climate change, probably quite rightly too, but also children's brains are changing because of the impact of the technology. You can photograph the brain and see it. So it is a pathway which is rather dangerous. And it also could make teachers quite lazy because if you have children using AI to generate homework and AI marking the homework, well, that's, that's not the way forward. What teachers need to do is they need to mark homework so they can plot the progress of children and understand the child. And also, of course, AI, the implications are that it tends to dehumanize the situation. And, yeah. and you know, we do Chris, need to get away Chris from is, the obsession Chris with AI. Just brought up something. Chris, you brought up something there, which I think is, is very, very relevant, and that is kids think differently than you did as a child, than I did as a child, uh, it, and the powers and the pressures on them, yeah. they think differently, they act differently, and they're going to be trained differently. Yes. Absolutely. So this is why it's so important. I always say that AI is a wonderful partner, if you like. It's a co-partner, a co-creator for certain things. And it will also increase other skills. So we had the great AI safety conference here at Bletchley Park, you might remember, back in November last year. All the wonderful people flew on. Elon Musk, who, whose father's a regular on my show, and we do all that sort of stuff. What happens is he was sort of looking about, these are the opportunities. What you need to understand is you're developing different skills. So the youngsters nowadays, we should encourage oracy, for example. What's which, Oracy? Oracy is basically when you stand up in front of a class and say, look, I've learned about this, I'm going to tell you about it. So that's a real power to basically teach people, not just to write, because AI can help you with that, it's a co-creator, but turn around and say, actually, to show that you've understood it, stand in front of the class and tell us about it and deal with questions and so on and so yeah, forth. That's not, um, with the greatest respect, I mean, that's not exactly revolutionary. Children have been exactly. debating and standing up for years. I just see red flags all over this, Chris McGovern, and, and I genuinely think it's going to absolutely destroy creativity I think it's going to green light laziness and I think it's an absolute disaster and should be nowhere near education I understand that teachers <laughs> have got a lot of bureaucratic pressures if they want help with any of the paperwork fine but when it comes to the basic act of teaching children I don't think there are any shortcuts to take what do you think 
Well, I would agree broadly with that. I mean, I, as I say, it's, uh, it's very addictive, the AI. And it's what's so important in a classroom, for example, is, is the camaraderie. Children work together to, to put, sometimes they discuss with the teacher to come to an answer to a problem. That camaraderie, that in, interchange of ideas will tend to go when you have machines in charge. Look, it's a dangerous pathway. And many, and, and we've just had heard mention of the Bletchley Park uh, Summit last year, and there's been a, a recent one in, in Seoul in Korea. The Elon Musk of this world, they are also aware of the dangers. It is an existential crisis. We can't go blundering off into this world of AI without thinking of what, what are the consequences. One school in the UK, we know from the press very recently, has gone totally over to AI. There are, and it says it's a leap in the dark. Well, we don't want to take leaps in the dark with our children. So it's a pathway fraught with dangers. But yes, there are advantages too. And we need to look at the balance and we need to tread very carefully. Fools rush in where angels fear to tread, I'm afraid. I couldn't agree more, I'm afraid, but maybe I'm stuck in the dark age. No, not at all. You make some great mm. points, and that's why I say you're going with your eyes open. And what they're saying is that it's reducing the boring, laborious tasks. Mm. Doing a, a program for a class, mm. it takes a bit of time. So if the AI, and it's trained on central resources, can speed up that process and give teachers more time to interact with pupils, that's got to be good. And the reality is you're not talking about getting rid of teachers. You're talking about using this as a tool to enhance the teaching methods. And that's the key. And they're supporting it. Mm. People are sort of turning around at the basis and saying, look, it's increased massively the ability of doing it. I'll give you an example. Uh, in America, for example, they say that chatting to chat GPT is more effective because it's got more empathy than chatting to your GP. Uh, and the reason for that, uh, and I'll tell you the reason, I thought uh, I'd get you started, Isabel. The reason for that, it's got more information, it's got more time to deal with that sort of side. So if we well, use this... it's become a bigger gap because people aren't going to be able to express empathy because they won't have any human interactions. It's, making, it's actually making the problem worse. Yeah. We need to go back to basics, human face-to-face -face contact, and I, I don't know, I hate it. As AI. long as you don't eliminate, it. don't eliminate the human face-to-face. Face. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'll give you the line. Born, uh, and Chris McGovern, Chris, always good to hear from Thank you. Thank you very much. Indeed, that's mm. AI in the classroom, and that's just one aspect of it. Mm. What do you know? What do you think about this? Let us know. I'm Arlene Foster on GB News, Britain's news channel.